off the chair. <laughs> I wasn't, uh... I know you're wearing a skirt, but I didn't see anything. Mostly trousers these days. Yeah, I prefer skirts. Healthier, isn't it? I imagine. <laughs> Allows the air to uh, circulate around the... Vagina! <laughs> We're ready for you, Mr. Garden. Yes, yes. We've had a letter of complaint which states that you are a negative and destructive influence on the smooth running of the Blackpool Probation Office. I, I think you'll find uh, whoever wrote that letter, it's just a clash of personalities. It's signed by everyone in your office. Right, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, that's what I mean. You know, it's a clash between me and them. <laughs> a negative and destructive influence, Mr. Garden. Are they right? Well, if you think that remembering a client's first name is less important than claiming generous expenses, then yes, they're right. If you think that the best way to deal with a client who's just been released from prison for the 14th time, having been passed from pillar to post, is to pass them on to yet another department, then yes, they're right. But I've dealt with over a thousand clients, and I believe that every single one... Of these 1,000, how many are now going straight? Three. Simon Garden was an inspiration. On my first day out of prison, he offered me a blank sheet of paper, and he said, that's your future. You can write off and apply for a job, or you can wipe your ass on it. And I said, I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. Before I met Simon, I was thieving and hitting people. But now, I'm a fishmonger. It's another string to me bow. Twelve months ago, I was in prison. Now, thanks to Simon, I'm a subservice support network supervisor providing PC, Mac and mainframe multimedia communication infrastructure with online e-test backup. Not many people can say that. Do you have anything further to add regarding Mr. Garden? He is annoying. It's true. He is annoying. We talk to your clients, Mr. Garden. Yeah, they're good people. I used to say to them, you're halfway up a mountain. Crime is the easy path to the bottom. Responsibility is the hard path to the top. But when you get there, it's a great view. Because in every sinner, there's a Thank spot. you, Mr. Garden. There's a vacancy in Manchester. I'll take it.
you just saved that girl's life. D.I. Yeah, Burton, city police. Oh, right. Sir. Oh, hello. You must be Kirsty. Yeah. You all right? Got a bit of a... Oh, I, I fell. Right. Now, car theft, car theft, ram raiding arson, car theft, car theft and car theft. Expelled from St John Fisher's, expelled from Hogarth, expelled from Glenbrook Junior, not expelled from St Thomas More. Why is that? It burnt down. Ah, oh, yes. Hence the arson. Yeah. All starting to make sense now. Yeah. You could hang your hat on that. <laughs> oh, he is. I think you'd better give that to me. Come back to this. Hello. Hello. Big Dipper. Oh, uh. I understand you're interviewing Kirsty Clark. Yes. Kirsty! Kirsty! Kirsty, for God's Get sake, let go! Me. I've got you! Ah! There she is. Come on, Kirsty. You've admitted to taking the car, all right? You admit to possession of drugs. And we'll drop all the other charges. Reckless driving, criminal damage, resisting arrest, arson. We'll call it a day. I'll take us down the pub, buy us all a pint of lager. And half a shandy, if no one's looking. For Mr. Garden. <laughs> all protesters charged today can collect their bicycles. Inspector Burton. Hello, Simon. I, I know she stole the car, but I've spoken to her, and she says she knew nothing about the drugs, and I believe her. You're new here, aren't you? Hmm. Unfortunately, she did have Class A drugs on her person. She said the drugs were... In a koala bear. Well, what? Not hers. Listen, we got muggers and rapists to catch. We can't be standing around chatting all day. We're not probation officers. No offence. <laughs> Cheerio, Simon. Um, there's something I forgot to ask, Inspector Burton. Oh, you'll find him at Faulkner Street, number 44. Gets a lot of his information there. Right. Um, oh, you know that gay porn magazine? Wasn't mine. Yeah, I'm nothing against gays. It's just that, uh, I'm not gay. Right. So, uh, given that, um, how would you like to have dinner with me one night? OK. Oh, good. See you later. Ha! Ah! We'll meet again, young man. Yes, very scary. Right. Occupation. Student. running the world. Still, ain't bad for business, is it? That's why, man, you are winning everything. Down to money. 
Where's Cochran? Polishing his shoes. Hello, love. It's your girlfriend. What about my Porsche? You're insured for fire and theft, aren't you? Got something for me? Lovely. Why the bonus? It's a golden handshake. I mean, the market's flooded with class A. You can get a grammar coat for 40 quid. It's just not worth the risk, is it? So we're going legit. Yeah, was just one problem with that, as far as I can see. Me. And me. That's, er, uh, two problems. We can't push our luck. We've not been lucky. I've been busy. I've just thrown the book at some little tart to cover his ass. It's a good scam, this, Paul. Let's not ruin it. We sort you out of pension. Look at you, thinking you're Al Pacino. You're just a dwarf with a calculator. Yeah. I've got a calculator, which is useful, cos I can account for every bill, every receipt, every cheque in boring detail. But a tax man's always welcome at my house. But if he was tipped off about you, he'd have a field day. Best see. He's a copper, so he earns this much. Bugger all. And he spends this much. It doesn't make sense. Unless he's on the take. <laughs> What the hell are you doing? Boss. Still thinking of going legit? No, I've just changed my mind. He's dead. You've killed him. What? What do you want? Some more, Chris. <coughs> Who's that? Coming out. Who are you? Please don't shoot. I don't my Chris. I'm hyperglycemic. And I, 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 it's the opposite of uh, diabetes. My I overproduce insulin and then my sugar levels crash. They get lethargic and I need regular carbohydrate snacks. What are you doing here? I really don't know. Oh, look, he's alive! Get him! something if you attack me i will go to the police it will be reported you'll have a criminal record you've got one okay in my wallet i've got 40 pounds that's 20 each plus a cash card it's got a 200 pound limit of which i've withdrawn 40 you've got that now the the pin number it's the battle of hastings oh oh my god oh Oh, it really hurt! Oh! 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 There is shit! Bloody hell! Where is he? Oh, God, I'm Bennett. Manchester, it's 8 o'clock. A man out walking his dog this morning made a gruesome discovery when he came across a headless corpse on the edge of the Stockport Canal. Police are urgently seeking the owner of a wallet which was found near the body. Although they're playing down... Hello, uh, my name is Simon Garden. I'd like to report uh, murder. Um, I know I look a mess. I, uh, I, I slept rough last night. I got punched in the face by a man with a stick. Fell off a roof into a canal. I actually got a condom stuck on my finger. 
I'm not a, a lunatic. I'm, I'm a probation officer. Um, I know, same thing. But no, this is murder, and I'd like to speak to a senior officer, please. Certainly, sir. Good. Oh. Hello, Simon. Hello. I reckon we should, you know, rub him out. We can't go rubbing people out. We're police officers. Oh, of course. What about the accountants? Yeah, it was unfortunate. You're just going to let him go? For the time being. He's a very scared boy. He'll probably go back to do-gooding in Toy Town. If he does talk, we'll pay him a visit. He'll find a kilo of Columbia's finest and a head in his fridge. Let's look at the facts. I'm in charge of the murder investigation. Your wallet's found near the body. You're helping police with their inquiries. <laughs> You're in a lot of trouble. But hang on, I think I can help you. If you keep your mouth shut, I've got a feeling the murderer will never be found. You can't intimidate me. Let me give it a shot. If you open your mouth, I won't lay a finger on you. But you'll go to prison. And when those nonces and those perverts get hold of a clever boy like you, and I'll make sure they do, they're going to be queuing up round the block. You're going to end up with an arsehole like a clown's pocket. That was pretty good. Do you like Thai food? Why? Well, I thought you might like to celebrate the fact you're no longer a major suspect. Uh, I can't. I'm leaving. Um, I'm not really up to the job here, so I thought I'd go back to my old one, if they'll have me. Oh, well, what about a goodbye dinner? Uh, I think it's probably best if I just go. Well, I was going with a bunch of mates. Anyway, I just thought you might like to join us, that's all. Don't worry, you won't be missed. Listen, it's been really, really nice working with you. Good luck with your career. I'm sure you'll go from strength to strength. Ain't got no home, ain't got no shoes, ain't got no money, ain't got no class, ain't got no skirts, ain't got no sweater, ain't got no perfume, ain't got no baby, ain't got no mind. Bye. Ain't got no mother, ain't got no culture, ain't got no friends, ain't Ditto. got no schooling. Ain't got no love, Ditto. ain't got no name, ain't got no ticket, ain't got no token, ain't got no God. You're going to end up with an arsehole like a clown's pocket. Uh. <sighs> Inspector, four days ago, you rescued a 15-year-old girl from a burning car. What's it like to be a hero? As far as I'm concerned, I was just doing my job. And any other officer in the same position would have done the same as me. If this sort of thing helps people to see through the uniform, then that's great. And you're to receive this year's Police Federation Bravery Medal. Are you looking forward to the award ceremony at the town hall next week? Yes, I am very much, but uh, I'll still be working. Business as usual. Criminals don't take days off, you know.
this tape. It should be there. I'm just giving it to the boss. Right. William, could you do me a favour? Could you hold this? I'll stay there just one second. Where's that snarky? Bill's just getting it. Where did the boss go to? Oh, to the bank to put something in his safety deposit box. Thank you. Hi, John. Who are you? John. John Jones. JJ. Can I help you? Your knit. What? I... Oh, my God, Emma, it's you! So what happened? I thought you were leaving town. Uh, no, I... I changed my mind. You look absolutely gorgeous. I'm a prostitute. Right. Why don't the police pay you enough? No, I'm undercover. Very convincing, yeah. You fooled me! Because we can't really talk here. Why? Miami Vice. Do you want a coffee? Yes. Why were you staring at that bank? Um, I'm thinking of robbing it. Simon! Hello, George. Come in, come in. Anyone uh, fallen off the roller coaster recently? No. <laughs> I inspect it every day. Don't worry about me, Simon. I will never go back to a life of crime. And it's all down to you. So, if you ever want a favor, all you have to do is ask. Well, I'm, I'm glad you say that, because I would like you to help me. Yes? Rob a bank. This is a test, isn't it? <laughs> no, 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 um, no, this is technically not a crime. We're not taking any money. I mean, it's just a videotape of a murder. George, it was horrific. I saw a, a man strangle a human being. Well, an accountant. No, you can't tempt me. <laughs> the murderer is a police officer. No. He's in charge of the investigation. No. George, this is not role play. I can't go to the police. I, I've been framed. I've no one else to turn to. Look, you always said crime is the easy path to the bottom. And now you want me to rob a bank? It's rather like asking one of those reformed drug addicts to have one last hit. That makes sense. I shouldn't have had that story. But I'm all right now. Oh, 
up a mountain, crime is the easy path to the bottom, responsibility is the hard path to the top. When you get there, it's a great view. Yeah. Well, doesn't that make you an hypocrite? In these circumstances, no. Oh, look, Simon, it's not that I don't want to help you. It's, it's just, um... It's me man. She's got crippling arthritis. I mean, she can hardly move. You know, I've got the shop. I've got her and, you know... A couple of chairs have been kicked over in the attic. I mean, she don't know why there's fish everywhere. If it weren't for that, I'd grab my bag and I'd be in that car with you now. Hey, Rambo! They're making their one cutting. I could have fried him, ate him, and shut him out for now. Give it to your man. You big girl. such an idiot back then, but now I'm not an idiot. I'm a computer salesman, thanks to you. The beauty of it is I don't even have to sell them, they sell themselves. All I do is help provide a service support network for a small additional fee, which keeps the customers happy. And me. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. Oh, that was a shy job. I hated it. Ah. We're all in. Manchester, here we come. Not quite. There's one more. Victor? Who's Victor? There was a story that Victor once stole the crown jewels from the Tower of London and then put them back without anyone noticing. How'd you know if no one saw it? I read it in the News of the World. Yep, that's why I read it. He's a master of disguise. Yep, sometimes even I don't recognize him. Victor? I'm Victor's wife. After he worked with you, he tried to give up his life of crime by channeling his interests into amateur dramatics. But one night, he sneaked off to do the safe at Jackson's, you know, the food processing plant. Two days later, one of the machines was playing up. They reckon he must have fallen into the mincer. Oh. By that stage, the order's already gone out. They tried to recall them. But all they got back was half a dozen pies, a couple of pasties. And is that what's...? Yes. What a waste. Yeah, of human life. Hmm. Mm -hmm. He's very fond of you. Mm. He had some tools I'm sure he would have wanted you to have. Thanks. Uh, I don't think we've got a lawnmower. No. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. I'm afraid it was a bit of a hoarder. Wow. DTI. Go oh, on. Digital transmission image. Oh, check this out. Don't shoot. <laughs> It's a fish eye length. <laughs> Victor obviously had a sense of humor. Hey, there's matches on it. What's this? It's a flask. Four? Tea, coffee, hot bovril. We'll take it. Welcome to my humble abode. Uh, there's just one rule. Do you mind popping your shoes off? Uh, it's just that it's a new carpet and, you know. <laughs> uh, apart from that, make yourselves at home. Sleeping arrangements. I have a spare bedroom. Thank you very much. Sofa bed. Mine. And uh, an inflatable mattress. Back, up. Good. Food, who's hungry? Yeah. Yeah. We got hummus, tama salata, uh, couscous... Tabbouleh, stuffed olives, cheese. Where's the cheese? 
in the fridge. Have you got any bread? Uh, focaccia. Is that, is that sliced? Well, it's a trait manger. No, it's not sliced. Right. OK, the bank, top view. Side road here, front door, uh, three windows, stairs, with a lift, and a door at the back, which I think leads to the vault. So, pretty basic. But what's stopping us getting into the vault and getting the tape? That's not important. All the outside doors are bomb-proof, the windows are toughened glass, and there's no adjoining building. You've got CCTV outside and inside. And you've got dual circuit alarm on all the doors and windows, heat and motion in every room. Electronically linked to an audio system and via a control centre to the police. And there's the vault. The walls are surrounded by concrete three feet thick. There's a bloody big toot on door. And I've got a combination lock that's changed once a week and a preset time lock. Which can only be changed from the inside. Some fresh coffee. You isolate the power supply to the system and cut it off. It's all integrated circuit. You've got backup systems for the backup systems. If you go near the power supply, you'll trigger the alarm. I'm talking discrete transistor crap. That's last year's old news. Why don't we just blow it up, get the money and go? Shut, Shut up. up! You mean the tape, not the money. Oh, yeah. Listen, Blondair, if you want to pick holes in my suggestions, be my guest. But I don't see you coming I'm up with a better idea. I'm just saying, it's so last If you don't have anything intelligent news. to say, shut up! Will you tell him to stop saying it is last year's old news? It is annoying, Colin. He's acting like a council official. I am a council official. Colin, what is today's news? A TSM ISP. Simps. A target-specific multi-invasive subversion program. He means a computer virus. He's taking the pit. Do you want me to hit him? Yes, please. Just give him try a it, Fishman. Watch it. Give him a pit. Get away, you! You get off it! Ow! Ow! That really hurt. Now listen, I'm very grateful that you've all agreed to help me rob a bank, but this is not a competition. We have to act as a team. Now, we're all very different people, and that's a good thing. Jeff here likes Oasis. Colin likes... What do you like? Hardcore Belgian trance. Great. George likes the Beach Boys. He likes them. I'm a bit of a deep purple nut. Uh, smoke on the water? Actually, the result of a jamming session in Montreux. Casino was on fire. They saw the smoke. Anyway, the point is... The point is we should stop pissing up rope and get on with it. Exactly. Now, Colin, what is a TSMISP? And would telling us about it be a waste of our time? It locates all the alarm systems at the control centre. And how would that target the alarm at our bank? It can't. It attacks all of them. That's not going to shut the systems down. You're more likely to set off every bunk alarm in the city. Colin, have an extra slice of toast. I think we deserve the morning off. Hmm. <clears throat> Emma? Hi, Simon. Oh, hi. I was told to come up here by, uh... My flatmate. Right. Just, just have a seat. Yeah, sure. I'm in the shower. OK. Um... What are you doing this afternoon? Nothing. Now, no pressure, but, uh, my Uncle Bernard is part owner of a really cool narrowboat on the Rochdale Canal. And, uh, as luck would have it, today's one of his days, but uh, he's unwell. Uh, he, he's got a problem with his body. But uh, it's, it's really nice inside. It's uh, warm and comfortable and lovely. Anyway, yeah, 
You've got a lovely little uh, cat. So, what do you think? About what? You know. Uh, you, me, narrowboat, canal. Unless you've got a better idea. That is just showing off. It's a fertility symbol. If you touch it, it's supposed to increase your sexual potency. Right. It's gone. What? Touch it. No. <laughs> Are you afraid to touch a penis? You're talking to a guy who's going blind. Go on. Don't you? <laughs> I'm just going to the... <laughs> Don't forget to wash your hands. Good afternoon. It's not what you think. It's wood. Hmm. Please, please. Could you please let me do something about that man over there? Emma, Emma, help! Uh, I know you're in there. I'll be out in a minute. Man in ladies' toilets. Assistance required. Suspected flasher. Roger, Maggie. I am not a flasher. Could you come out, please, sir? You know you shouldn't be in the ladies. I've got an upset stomach. Where's the perv? Get out now! Dirty bastard. Hang on, I'm nearly done. No, that's it. Sorry about that. Bit of an emergency. Now, what's the problem? You've been reported for indecent behaviour. Well, he he had a lump in his trousers. Yes, I had several. I shan't myself. Now, does anyone know anything there as Marks and Spencer's is? It's straight down the high street, and the first on the left. Thank you very much. It came off in my hand. Don't worry. It's happened to me a few times. fingers. What the heck? I've been thinking. Go on. If you try going through a window, ha, huh. it's too visible, but if you can get on a roof, it's concealed. It buys you time. So how are we going to get in them? I'm coming to that. It's like a fire door. It can only be opened from the inside. Hang on, hang on. There's like an air vent thing there, right? Now, I reckon that I can go through there, go around, open the fire door, let you all in. Brilliant. The aperture to the air conditioning unit, which I assume you are referring to, is 14 inches square. Brilliant, but flawed. I could get in there. Go on a diet. You won't be wanting that, then. Never touch my food. Whoa. 
Jeff, Colin, calm down. It's a good idea. It's just... <laughs> I'd rather you didn't argue. Jeff's got it on his plate at the moment. I, I know, but he really makes me angry. Because uh, he talks rubbish sometimes. Uh, but, but if I have upset him, I'm sorry. That's very big of you to say so, Colin. George, anything to add to that? Huh? What? Mum. Um. Uh, 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 no. Well then, Jeff being very quiet at the no! moment. <laughs> Kirsty, what the hell are you doing here? I thought I'd rob you. What you're doing is illegal. So is robbing a bank. How do you know we're robbing a bank? It's written on your notice board. Right, Kirsty, if you forget about this, I'll forget about you robbing my house. That's not equal. I'm robbing a house, you're robbing a bank. What do you want? I want to join your gang and rob a bank. Yeah, but we're not stealing any money. And that is right, isn't it, Simon? Yes. Please? You're too young. I could drive the getaway car. I've stolen 44 cars. Yeah, and you've been caught 44 times. We don't need you, Kirsty. I'm sorry. Right. Where were we? Jeff had the wizard idea of gaining entry through an air duct, and I pointed out that at 14 inches square, none of us could fit through it. I could. Ladybird receiving you. I'm about a mile away. I can still hear you. <laughs> OK, now try five miles away. Over. Even if we can break into this place, what do we do about the getaway? I've got an idea about that. Now, on Friday, stay away from the target area until rush hour. Any questions before we move on? Why is the protest on a weekday? For maximum disruption. Bollocks! If we had it on a Sunday at uh, 12 noon, uh, outside the West Clyde Bank, there'd be a bigger turnout. Yeah, some of us have to work. Yeah. 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 The city's empty on a Sunday. Exactly, we can reclaim the streets. Yeah. And the kids! Yeah. Yeah. It's Friday at five o'clock. It's already been decided. Who decided? The committee. Bollocks! I thought this was supposed to be a democratic organisation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! It is. The elected committee has taken a vote on your behalf and the organisation abides by the decision of the committee. Bollocks! You gonna let him push us around like that? No way. Tell them we're not sheep. We're not sheep? No. Oh. Time to put it to a vote. Put it to a vote. Good idea. Put it to a vote. <laughs> All right, I'll put it to a vote. All those who want the protest on Sunday at noon. Outside the West Clyde Bank. Outside the West Clyde Bank. Raise their hands. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes! Yes! If they realise they've loaded one of them virus things, won't they just tell everyone? Would you tell anyone if you'd been looking at this? Maybe it's boring, isn't it? Just variations on a... I've not seen that before. Hey, 
the uh, movement on the murder investigation? Uh, what, you mean the headless accountant? No, a bit of a dead end, that. That probation officer bloke. Ah, he's well out of the picture. Let's not talk shop, though, eh? I'll bet be off. One for the road. No, thanks. It's an order. Vodka chaser. So how's your love life at the moment? No time for anything, really. Know what you mean? Oh! Do you think it'd be drunk, Inspector? Yeah. I don't believe in in-house romance. Who said anything about romance? Stick to what you're best at. What is it? It's a godler. A what? A George-operated, time-lock equalising robot. This is telescopic? Yeah, well, it's similar. It's hydraulic. And uh, once inside the vault, this emits an electromagnetic pulse at the LED displays, causing the twin clocks to synchronise at zero, thus deactivating the time lock. How do you know that? I heard you on the phone to your mother. Yeah, yeah, she, she likes to know what I'm up to. Now, with the time lock, it's quite a simple matter for the gutler. I told you, it's top heavy. It's only a small modification. It needs a redesign. If that goes tits up, it's not just Simon go to jail, we all are. It won't. How are we going to get the bank to let's put that in the vault? What did you say was inside it? Ten thousand pounds in coins, notes and cheques, hopefully. And this will buy beds for all the children? Mm. And a couple of wheelchairs. They're disabled? Challenged. Of course. And blind? Are they? Yeah, some of them. Right. Uh, well, unfortunately, we, we, we can't actually allow um, items like this into the vault. <laughs> we might be able to make an exception for a valuable painting or a sculpture, but... Excuse me. Can I shake hand with you? Yes. It's Dr. Morrow. Munro. Oh, yes, of course. Can I say thank you? Thank you. Thank you for all you've done for the children at St. Simmons. To see the smiles on those kids' faces when they wore shoes for the very first time, it breaks my heart. Do you know what they call him down at the children's home? No. <laughs> Dad. God bless. Sorry. Uh, did you have uh, children of your own? Uh, yes, yes, I have. They're, uh, they're precious, aren't they? <laughs> yes. Right. You wait here while I go and open the big door. Uh, 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 uh. God, it's a massive door. You must be very strong. Um, I'm afraid I am going to have to ask you to stand over there. Oh, yeah, sorry. One, seven, eight, nine. What's wrong? Let me rewind it. Let's see it again. Oh, crumbs. Whose idea was this? Simon's. Thanks, Jeff. I didn't know he was going to move his bum in the way. Well, people do move their bums. Why didn't she move the pig? Why don't you piss off? Language. It's not Kirsty's fault. Why are we putting ourselves on the line for a man who wears corduroy trousers? He helped you, remember? That was his job. He was paid. Look, it's a setback. We need a solution. What we don't need is a whinging, surfing lemon head. Lemon knobhead. Yeah. No, what we don't need is a curly-headed wanker trying to be Captain Kirk. At least he got things done. Imagine you looking for Spock in Star Trek IV. I'm sorry we couldn't find him. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> that was Star Trek III. It was called The Search for Spock. One, seven, eight, nine, three, five, twenty! 
It's written on the back of his bloody hand. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Hi. Um. Um. Ah, uh, come in. Ah, uh, everyone. This is Emma. She's a friend of mine and a police constable. Oh. Off duty. This is my cousin, Colin. Hi. Hi. That's cousin Jeff. Hi. Hi. This is my. Uncle George. H hi. Hi. And this is... I know you. You're, um, his daughter. Hi. Hi. Uh, can I, um, excuse me. Oh. They, uh, they're not your family, are they? No. She's a joyride. Yes. They're ex-clients. What they do in your living room? Well, they are part of a voluntary self-help group. Um, we, we meet regularly, and what I particularly encourage them to do is, rather than concentrate on their own problems, you know, is to look at other people's, and that's beneficial for two very good reasons. One, it makes them feel less isolated, more able to focus, and two, I really like your knees. <laughs> and your eyes. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I like everything. Um, but I, I really like your knees. What you were looking at in the bedroom mirror? Your knees, no. no. I mean, yes, just your knees. Well, I probably didn't even see those. Mm. No, 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 we can't. I'm not here. D.I. Burton murdered Trevor Deacon. What are you talking about? I saw him do it. I was eating crisps behind these boxes. And why didn't you tell me before? Because if I'd opened my mouth, Burton would have framed me. I'd be in prison. I'd be buggered. Daily. And what's all this for? I can't tell you. You're a police officer. I thought I was your friend. You know who worked Trevor Deacon's effects? Who checks him? D.I. Yeah, Burton did it personally. Why? It's OK. Sir, can I ask you a question? Yeah. The murder victim, Trevor Deacon, did you know him? No. Then... Why is your number in his mobile phone? Do you think I murdered him? Well, I didn't say that. Then who did? Oh, <laughs> Tamara. To the most audacious crime of the century. He means your ear cut. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, to having friends. Yes. Thank you. To, to friends. friends. Search warrant. Of course, all the food in prison is processed. But you get used to it after about 10 to 15 years, which is the going rate for murdering an accountant. Except I didn't murder him. You did. Yeah, but I've got an alibi. You haven't got one of those, have you? If you're going to frame me for murder, you really ought to have a lot more evidence than that. Boss, I think you'll want to see this. 
Nice material to have lying around with a young girl in the house. WPC Walsh, kindly escort the miner from the room. Kirsty. You do know she's under 16, don't you? Of course you do. She was in your care. They're lovely at that age, aren't they? You're horrible. He's right. I'm so horrible, they're giving me a bravery award at the town hall tomorrow. Funny old world, isn't it? Your solicitor has been delayed. All right. I'll wait. Can I explain? Or do you really think I was boiling a head? Why, well, I know you've been lying to me. Give me ten seconds. I can prove Burton killed Trevor Deacon. It was recorded by a security camera. The tape is in a safe deposit box in a bank vault. I've got to get out of here to the bank to get the tape to clear my name. That was twelve seconds. Come on, be quick. It's that woman there. I'll take a look inside your handbag, madam. What's this? I didn't even buy anything. I just paid for my petrol, that's all. Burton will be getting his bravery award in three hours' time. Pardon? What are you saying? Burton will be getting his bravery award in the town hall. Why are you telling me that? Do you think if we ask the guard to give us a bottle of champagne and we could propose a toast? That's a good idea. I could grab the bottle and smash him over the end with it. He's being sarcastic. Mm. Just saying. Would have been great seeing Burton's face when you turned up with that toast. It would have been great if Adolf Hitler had put his energies into a vegetarian restaurant instead of forming the Third Reich. But it didn't happen. Do I like vegetarians? I didn't know we owned a van. I nicked it. Didn't think you'd mind this time. I know it's my fault you're in this mess. No, it's mine. It's part of 
partly yours. <laughs> Run it. Okay, let's do it. Ladybird to praying mantra. Ladybird to praying mantra, are you receiving me? It's praying mantis. Praying mantra, praying mantra. Praying mantra receiving. Coast is clear. Just two old dears waiting for a bus. Over. Anyway, she had a lemon sponge. I know a lemon sponge. Oh God, I really can't stand heights. Okay, you can you can let go now. Okay, Colin's computer program will activate the alarm in T minus fifteen seconds. Everyone ready? Good, good. Ten seconds. I'll count down. Five, four, three, two, one. Kirsty. That's easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> See you on stage. The sirens. Are they going off all over his computer problems? My observations for four males just escaped from Gladstone Street Police Station. Get on to Mills, find out what's going on. the alarm's going off. All right, madam, we've got it sorted. How do you know which box the video's in? 
1962. Here the Beach Boys formed. Who are the Beach Boys? You won't like them. You can hear the words. He said if she doesn't eat anything, then come what may, she'll die. But it wasn't a usual doctor. And he did have a beard. A usual doctor's in Spain, gallivanting. All right for some, isn't it? What the fuck are you on about? of the Greek goddess Athenea. Let's hope she's on our side. Fallen over, has it? Yes. I did insist on a redesign. I have to say, it did. R uh, right, so, so, I mean, what were are we. We're knackered. We're knackered. Unless, of course, Kirsty presses this red button. to Ladybird. Are you receiving me? Over. Mustafa, Mustafa. Come in, Ladybird. Bird. It was very rude. And they uh, used the F word. Uh, Sally and Jennifer outside fish and chip yeah. shop on uh, Warcroft Road. Oh, yeah. It's 22 nowadays. Oh. God has seen the wire. Lady Bird. Grasshopper. Uh, stay focused. Right, access code. Uh, anyone write it down? Just testing. It says code invalid. <laughs> could they have changed the code? Well, yeah. Or well, there could be some sort of hidden backup system. Hands up anyone here who's robbed a bank before. George, what were you in for? I'm a serial bigamist. Don't worry, George, let's just isolate the problem. I just like weddings. Not that problem, this problem. I'll isolate it. We can't get through this door, and some coppers are about to come through that one! So what are we gonna do? Nothing. Victor! So long as the alarm is active, the door won't open. I thought you might need a bit of help. Give us a couple more minutes and I'll have it cracked. Who is he? One of the greatest criminal minds in the world. Shh, shh. Now, try again. But that means they're in the building. Well, I always find on these occasions that it helps to be quick.
Thought you were dead. Just resting. Saw your grave. Your wife said that's where they buried uh, half, half a dozen pies, pies and a couple of pasties. What a waste. Well, that wasn't too difficult. What are you doing? I'm opening a deposit box belonging to a Detective Inspector Burton. We've got what we came for. No, I'm having a look. Where's Victor? Seems to be all clear, Sarge. You better check the vaults. I'll go. Reed, you go with her. Oh. Here. It's not our money. It's not his either. This money is from drugs. It will only end up going to the government, and they'll probably spend it on weapons of mass destruction. Right now, you are halfway up a mountain. Crime is the easy path to the bottom. Excuse me, we're robbing a bank. Technically, yes. Why don't we just take the money, and if we change our minds, we can send it back? That sounds like a good compromise. It's not a compromise. You're taking the money. Technically, yes. <laughs> Sarge, lift stopped. Sarge, can you hear me? Power cut! No, it's Victor. I've got to go back. Never go back. I left the tape. In that case, go back. Sweet then. I can't. I'm busy. Actually, I've changed my mind. Women. to make sure she doesn't panic when she jumps. Oh, my God! George, I'm perfectly happy to go first if you're a bit worried. Well, I am a bit worried. No, no, you, you'll be fine. Just step off, let gravity do the work. Jeff's at the bottom, I'm right behind you. Thanks, Colin. Piece of cake. Where's Simon? Craig, he'll be needing some crisps.
stuff in glass. It's a bank. On the tape. This is a short film about killing by the Polish director Krzysztof Kozlowski. It's a simple story about a man who kills someone in the heat of the moment and then it follows through the whole legal process culminating in the man's conviction and state execution which is just as futile as the murder and that's the uh, point really that killing is wrong. I've seen it. It's shit. Mm, yes it is. Why is it called Tuesday? Uh... Get after him! officers being honored here today represent the force for good that I want to see in the 21st century. They are all people's policemen. Come here. One word and you're dead. Where's that tape? Wait. Wow. One punch. Here's your money. Thank you. We're climbing that mountain. Good. You're all 
under arrest. Eh? Hey? Again. Oh, thanks very much. I was wondering how I was going to get hold of that. Destroy it. You've done the job for me. <laughs> he who laughs last laughs longest. Oh, you've got a secret plan, have you? Yes, I have, actually. And what's that exactly? Well, it's a secret. Inspector Burton? Yes. How do I look? Crooked. What have we got a secret plan? Oh, no, we're knackered. Hello? Hello. Where are we going? You tell me. I just wanted to say I'm very pleased today, not just because I'm receiving this uh, award, but also because this is the first time I've worn this uniform for a long time and it still fits. Uh, excuse me. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but I have got a gun and it's pointed at this police officer's head. So I'm sure you're aware the initial procedure is to stay calm, don't inflame the situation and listen. OK, my name is Simon Garden. I'm a probation officer. I have been wrongly accused of murder. I can't believe there are some people talking at the back. Shh! Shh! Please, please be quiet or, or, or you know, I will shoot it in the head. Thank you. Right. I am not a murderer. I know it doesn't look good at the moment, I've got a gun. But I, you know, I'm not capable of murder. I don't, I don't even doubt to fire a gun. But, uh, hey, you just pull the trigger, right? Kirsty, we borrowed this money today from a bank. It was in a safe deposit box in the name of Detective Inspector Burton. Uh, Mr. Garden, take the gun away from the young officer's head. It's, 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 okay, it's okay, I won't pull the trigger. Yeah, I bet, yeah, I might. So, man. Explain the money. This is money that was to be used as bait and a sting on the head of a drug syndicate that I've infiltrated posing as a corrupt policeman. Just wasted two years of police time, Simon. What about the tape? Thank you. It's a long time since I've said this, but I'm arresting you on suspicion of murder. Sir, I can explain. Oh. Right, now, I've got the gun, and as you've seen, I will kill if I have to. While you're down there, can you put the rest of the money in the bag, please? There should be more than that. If you kill me, you'll be a serial killer. No! You have to kill three people to be a serial killer. Sorry, that's just America. It's two here. Pulling that trigger will achieve nothing. You'll just look silly. Take over from here. Thank you. You're welcome. I look after the money. to let me go. 
I, uh, I lost the key. Oh, well, that's all right. Uh, George? No problem. Oh, no. That's a spear in Jackson Pitlock. You won't be able to get those open till the morning. Just a very beautiful moment. Harlem. Is that a, a gun in your pocket? No, it's my penis.